Hello Ableton lovers, this is Freddie Frogs, certified Ableton trainer. I'm a producer, a sound engineer, a technician, and I've worked with people like Above and Beyond, Shy FX, Damon Alburn, or Asian Dub Foundation. As an instructor with Point Blank, I've developed all the Ableton courses here at the college and also the performance course online. This video series will give you an insight of what you can learn on a course with me. This is the second video in a series of tutorials about dummy clips. So in the previous video, we used dummy clips to generate follow actions and create a structure for our session view. We then understood that dummy clips were a silent clip, we use that as a support to write a clip envelope or even a follow action. So in this video, we're going to push things a little further and use dummy clips to create a series of action, a series of clip envelopes in order to create transitions for our live set. So let me show you how this works first and then I'll show you how to implement it for your own live sets. Let's send a few clips to play. First backbone here, another drum beat here, and maybe a bass line. Cool. I'd like to introduce some vocals, but the best way to introduce a new sound is to have a kind of transition in between. So this is what these dummy clips are going to let me do. Let me send the dummy clips for four bars and introduce the vocal afterwards. And one, and two, and three, and four, two, three, and... Great. So you see, I ha my hands were free to trigger that new clip because the actions, because the effects automation were unfolding automatically for me. Let me uh, move this a little further and add a new lead sound to this. Uh, this time I'm going to use this dummy clip here for a four bar long repeat. And now, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... See? It's a great way to build momentum and tension in your performance. I mean, as you probably know, it's pretty difficult to generate great transitions on stage. We only have two hands and we, we can't really generate loads of different effects and modulate loads of different effects at once. And also at the same time, think about the next clip we're going to launch. So these dummy clips are great. You just launch the clip and it unfolds, it automatically triggers a series of action over a certain amount of bars and you get your hands free to trigger the next set of clips. So how is this implemented on our live set? Let me show you now. Let's delete these two dummy clips tracks first and let's create a brand new audio track. Let's rename that, for example, Effects 1. Great. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure that all these tracks, these channels, are flowing through that one. So to do this, we'll open the I.O. section of Ableton Live and we'll use the Audio 2 section to route these signals over to that bus. So when I now generate a few sounds, you'll find that they automatically flowing through this channel. Let's reset the volume to zero. And you see when I mute the channel, well, there's no sound. Of course, you could consider this as almost like a sub-master for your sounds, okay? Now, we need a dummy clip to write our envelopes onto. So let's just uh, grab this clip here. Let's see how long this is. Okay, great. So this is a little short just now. Let's make it a little longer. Let's say eight bars. That should probably be enough. Okay, that's it. I've got an eight bar clip here. You'll notice that the clip is automatically deactivated here. This is due to the position of the monitor switch in that track. The monitor switch here is in position in which means that any clip on the track will not be able to play. It's automatically disabled, deactivated. And instead, all the incoming signals from the other tracks will be led through to the fader and in turn passed on to the master. So, monitoring means the clips can't be playing. That's great, because that's what dummy clips are, silent clips. So we're going to uh, rename this clip off. And this will be the clip to reset my effects so they aren't heard. Okay, so let's start simply with a single effect, like an auto filter. However, I'm still going to group this into a rack, like so, so I can now map certain parameters to my macros. Just a right click away, this enables you to then control these parameters via these dials over here. This is in the long run going to enable you to do more intricate mappings and more intricate envelopes. 
So that's it. I've mapped the frequency of the auto filter to a macro. It's now time to write an automation for the macro. First of all, I'm going to jump to the off clip and ensure that the envelope for that macro is actually set to full, like so. I'm also going to write a little node here so that every time this clip is triggered, the macro resets itself to its full position. I'm now going to copy this clip over. Common D is the shortcut to duplicate a single clip. Now let's create, let's say, a four bars filtering, for example, just simple like that, okay? Now I'm going to go over to my macro, hit it and select it, back to my clip. That's it, the macro is there for me to uh, automate. Let's do a four bar automation here, like so, and then automate the clip so it automatically triggers the first clip down, the off clip. So when I trigger this clip, it's going to play for four bars, and then it's going to play the first clip in the group, which is the off clip. Great. So let's play and hit the clip. Four bars are unfolding. The filtering, you can see it happening with the clip envelope, and then we jump back after four bars to the main clip. Maybe I could do better with the slight slow backup here. Let's see how that feels. Yeah, that, that's slightly gentler, okay? So that's how you do it. And you see automatically the off clip is triggered for us by the follow actions. So let's add another effect in that chain right there with maybe a frequency shifter, for example. I quite like this effect. Let's put it into that group as well. And why not map the frequency over to that dial here, okay? So I can reset that to zero just for now. Okay, and let's move on with the next clip. Let's do a four bars uh, pitch down, for example. That's it. So I go into my envelopes, make sure that the frequency is actually reset to its full position, and therefore it's not heard. And I'm now going to create a pitch full over four bars, like so. And you see now when I trigger this clip, it will create an automation for this macro, which is that dial here. And after four bars, it automatically goes back to the off clip. So you now understand the potential behind this technique. So go ahead, implement it on your live set. I feel a lot of professionals out there do use this technique. So see you on the next tutorial where we'll learn how to use dummy clips to change presets, patches on our synthesizers.